We're speaking to Richard Ering this morning. He is a freelance voiceover talent. And recently, in the past couple of years, he's actually lost a lot of weight as well. <laughs> Good morning, Richard. Thank you so Good much for morning. speaking to us. It's nice to be speaking to you guys. It's been a while since I did yeah. radio. The last time I ever was uh, on one was... 2012 with uh, Sarah. Wow. Gee. Nice. Now, well, it's good to hear your voice again on Light. Very guess, distinctive all voice, your right? your fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> My fans are getting older, so <laughs> just like me as well. <laughs> I hope they're hearing problem. They don't have a hearing problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, Richard, at your heaviest, how much did you weigh? 115 kilograms. And I, I think JD's. Uh, have seen uh, seen me before when I was in. And your heaviest, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. At one hundred and fifteen kilos, this was how many years ago? Two thousand and ten, maybe, and mm. uh, uh, between two thousand and ten and twelve. Okay. But I've always been heavy for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, even when I was teaching diving, when I was on radio, and all that. And uh, in twenty twelve. I was with Sarah and we had Dr. Raj Buns every Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, off air, we started talking about fitness and health and all that kind of thing. I mean, he understood being a doctor himself. So I told him my cholesterol level, which was uh, quite high mm. at that time was nine. Mm. So wide open and he says, Richard, if you don't do something about yourself, you're going to drop down one day and get a stroke. And that didn't strike me. For me, no problem. Lah. I mean, mm-hmm. we're in Malaysia. The yeah. food is good, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I just carried on until 2016. I've left uh, light then and all that. And uh, I went for a cholesterol blood test. And then the doctor told me, uh, you're here for a cholesterol test, but you do, you not only have cholesterol, now you have diabetes. <gasps> wow. Uh, and you didn't know this uh, like from the feeling? There were no it. symptoms. Yeah, I didn't know. I had symptoms, but I, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Pushed it aside. Ig- uh, ignorantly ignored it mm-hmm. because I didn't know th- it was a symptom for diabetes. Right. I was going to the toilet uh, like once or twice within the hour. That is one of the symptoms. If you go to the toilet, uh, I mean, not diarrhea, to pee, um, that is one of the symptoms. You, you, you tend to pee a lot, mm. okay? Uh, you wake up in the middle of the night, you go to the toilet again. Mm. And that's one of the symptoms which I didn't realize until you know I was diagnosed of it. And it was at a level of 15, which is extremely, extremely high. A normal person is... Uh, under six. Oh wow! So I'm okay. at fifteen. So you're like three times the normal person's Correct. level. Okay. So immediately I was given medication. Okay, and uh, I started on it. So I told myself, "You've got cholesterol. You've got uh, diabetes." And at the same time, before you do any test, the minute you go to a clinic, you know, they will take your uh, what they call blood pressure. And my blood pressure was high. Mm. It's about one fifty five at that time. So I've got the whole package. Yeah. And I told myself, if you want to see your daughter grow up, you better do something about yourself. Mm-hmm. So that was the start of the journey. And the first thing I ever did was stop sugar, stop rice, because they're both high in sugar. I need to get rid of the diabetes first mm-hmm. uh, because spots started to appear, dark uh, spots started to appear on my legs. And according to people, those are what do you call, I I can't remember the term, Uh, but they are the start of a bad thing where eventually it grows bigger and bigger. And And become gangrenes, right? Yes, that's the thing. And you have to amputate your leg and it starts going up. So I got very worried about that. So I stopped sugar. I stopped uh, what do you call rice, the first thing. And I started putting on my sneakers. Every time my daughter went for a tuition class, which is an hour, I would go and walk like an idiot and really fast. Like (laughs) I keep thinking to myself, you know, the days where you have to be in the studio at six, by by 5.45, you're not there. You better (laughs) start running. (laughs) So I tell myself, 
oh shoot, I'm late for work, I'm late for work, I'm late for work. <laughs> and that was the speed I was walking. It's like you're walking from the car park to the studio at that speed. <laughs> So I would walk for an hour or at least 45 minutes twice a day. And then it started to improve. Okay. Once I got into the habit, then, you know, every, the, the, all the levels started to drop. And mm. I bought all these home tests for diabetes, for sugar level, and also, um, you know, for blood pressure. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then I could see drop with the diet and also the exercise. But what got you to... Yeah. Yeah. Well, Health status aside, Richard, were you ever bothered by your size previously? No. Did you have self-esteem issues or no. body image issues? No, I've never had them. To me, um, how I look, I'm happy. I'm completely happy with myself. You know, mm. um, I just want to enjoy life. I mean, I like to eat. I like food. And What um, was your lifestyle like before you actually lost the weight? Uh, go to work. Like you guys. Did you have uh, any diets or routines? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, it'll come to a point where I tell myself, yes, oh, I better diet because you know why? We photo have shoot. our... Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> our yearly photo shoot coming up. Or, or if, you know, Jake comes around or any of the, the bosses. Yeah, yeah. bosses comes around and says, hey, you better do something. There's a photo shoot coming up. Oh, and then when I go try on the jacket, and it doesn't fit anymore. Uh, <laughs> That's did this jacket I... shrink? <laughs> <laughs> That's when I start, you know, jogging and start losing it. But then again, back in the days, I mean, we were much younger. So it's easier to get rid of, you know, excess fat and all that. But as you get older, it gets a little bit and a little bit more difficult. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, I've never bothered about how I look. Things went on as usual. And it's always that tomorrow lah, tomorrow Mm, lah. Procrastinate, yeah. Yeah. And I don't blame young people, working adults like yourselves for doing that because I did that. You know why we do that? Because by the time we're done with work, we are tired. Unless you're very, very disciplined, you know, to tell yourself, I need to knock in an hour of exercise every day. Yes, but then again, the chances of uh, what do you call dropping off is also very high. Yeah. All it takes is one festive season. Oh, it's okay, lah. You know, I'll get back to it again. It's okay, I get back to it. But that get back never comes until today. Even though I have more time, that still crops up, and mm-hmm. I have to force myself either to go to the trainer indoors, which I have at the back of me, or I take the bike out for a ride. Because you've got lots of excuses. Oh, yo, the weather, not so good. Lah. Oh, <laughs> it's going to take me three hours to come back on a long ride. Lah. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe tomorrow. Lah. All these kind of things will set in. But you have to force yourself and get into the discipline to do it. But you were scuba diving. Don't you need to be fit yeah. to do that? Brother. I was just going to say earlier, you said that you were diving and yeah. all that. So you led a pretty active lifestyle even back then. <laughs> Won't they burn yeah. off all the stuff anyway? Do me a favor, you guys, when you go to Red Dung or go to any island, try and spot out more than five diving instructors who is fit and happening. <laughs> Seriously, really? Is that bad? Wow. The only time I was really fit and, you know, looking like an instructor was when I went to do my instructor development course to sit for the exam Hmm. I told myself you need to be fit yeah so when I came out yeah you look like an instructor after two years everything goes downhill and then you tell your students or you tell your divers let's (laughs) swim with the current so you're always diving with the current the current does the work and pushes you to you know look at nice things and all that then you come back because you've been in the water, it's cold. It's only human. Oh, you get hungry very fast. Oh, good food. Because, you know, they prepare a buffet for you and all that. So you whack lah. And then after the whole diving trip is done with all that eating and enjoyment, your friend says, hey, we're in Dungun. Let's go for that, uh, what do you call, uh, stuff there. Very good, very famous to eat. So you are there whacking again. 
So you'll be eating like, all the time. Mm. I remember the there was night. one time you were telling me that you were drinking a lot of soft drinks as well. Oh yes, correct. That was the cause of my diabetes because right. uh, it was just before Chinese New Year, okay? And they had all these promotions on uh, Coke. I mean, soft drinks, lah, aerated drinks. One ringgit a bottle. So the when big we bottle, were... the one point five liter bottle. No, no, the small one. No, okay, right, right. Okay. Yeah, one ringgit a bottle. Root beer and also uh, fizzy drinks and all that. And you're thinking to myself, when I was young, your mom, your parents will not allow you, <laughs> whether it be because they are poor or it's bad. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm working. I'm an adult. I can afford it. I bought them in crates and put it at home, and started drinking it. Eventually, um, it replaced water. That was how you get it. Okay, so you drank soft drink every day, every single day. Yes, and you drink about three, four bottles a day. Oh my god! What? Oh, wow. Okay. And every time you 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 feel hot. You open the fridge, you take a bottle, and it's gone. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's a small bottle, yeah. and then you take about three or four. I mean, where is that sugar going to go? Because I'm not exercising. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, the yeah. most difficult thing was driving from Astro back to the house. <laughs> <laughs> the traffic. Ah, uh, but not in the morning. <laughs> and in between, walking down, looking for things to eat. Oh God! Oh my God! <laughs> okay, so. Initially, you've never tried any kind of weight loss program before. So in 2016, nope. the the wake up call, the diabetes diagnosis, the cholesterol level, the high blood pressure, and that was the wake up call. That was the catalyst. Yes, that was the catalyst. Uh, but then again, you see, it's very funny. All of us actually know what to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But whether we do it or not, you don't have to sign up. You know, and pay for. Uh, packages, or even pay to go to a gym, or pay to take up yoga or whatever. You just have to bring out the pair of sneakers and start walking. Mm. You know. Yeah. But but that said, a lot of people nowadays, especially during this pandemic, bicycle shops they are sold out of wow. bicycles. Okay. Yes. You know, um, people are exercising, but you have to do. Exercise in the right way.、Mm. I go to the park and I see a lot of people around my age. You know, three or four guys walking, chit chatting. You know, or、oh, the linggang linggang thing lah. So this、ah. is not this is not sufficient in your opinion. Absolutely not. <laughs> you need to raise up your heart rate. Okay, to a certain extent, it is about a hundred and twenty beats per minute to start burning fat. So you're talking about a brisk walk, not like JD says, lenggang lenggang, <laughs> talking about grandfather's story, grandmother's story. So how did you graduate then, Richard, from walking, fast paced、okay. walk to cycling? Now, like, did you have to learn it all yourself? Did you get a personal trainer? How、no. did you graduate from that? Did you go see a dietitian or nutritionist? I cannot afford, you know, all this kind of trainer trainer thing, even the gym and all that. I know it's not going to work for me because I know I pay for the gym for one year and I'm just going to go there for a month and then that's it. I'm going to drop <laughs> off. <laughs> and the fact that I'm a China man, I'm not going to pay money. <laughs> I'm stingy. <laughs> so, but the thing is, like I said, everybody knows what to do. You just need to have that discipline to do it. So I, I told myself. Don't try to be too ambitious. Don't try to jog because you're not going to be able to jog with that big belly in front of you. You know, people in Astro used to say, "Hey, brapa lam, ah,、uh, brapa bula na." <laughs> <laughs> so there's no way I can jog. I tried. I tried to jog for less than even five、uh, hundred meters or a kilometer, and because of that belly lunging forward every time, it has caused a back pain. Ah, okay. Because it will put pressure on your、right. spine. So forget it. Do the easiest thing and walk, brisk walking. So I did that for three, four months, and it worked. And then you tell yourself, now that I've got into the discipline of,、uh, you know, doing it just about every other day. In in a week, you have maybe two days rest. The rest you keep doing it. 
And then I started slow jogging. Again, I tell myself, Richard, don't try to be a hero. Don't try to jog fast. Just slow. I don't care how slow you go, but just jog. And if you're too tired, just walk. So I started doing that. And uh, in between, I mean, alternate between walking, jogging, walking, jogging, you see the results. And once you see the results, you'll be motivated to do it. But you have to do it correctly not lenggang lenggang seriously and a lot of people make the mistake oh today i walk brisk walking 45 minutes you know how much you burn in 45 minutes about four i give it like roughly about 400 calories but that one packet of nasi lemak is about 600 calories or at least 400 and above yeah so that's your exercise for the day gone mm. you know and then we have every day about 1500 based on your weight okay to burn to maintain that weight so to lose weight you need to have a credit that means you cannot exceed 1500 mm -mm. so this all i learned by myself you know mr google has all the answers for you <laughs> so every okay. day i try to just have a credit of 500 okay. not being too ambitious yeah and that's how you lose weight because, and you cut out all sugars and carbohydrates. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of difference. Do you still eat rice now? Now I can because I have managed to clear out everything. I'm not on medication anymore. Right, right. Okay. okay. Happy mm. to say that. Right. So I do eat rice off and on. But now I choose the kind of rice I eat. I don't take normal white rice. I take uh, either basmati or sometimes brown. I brown or... And I take very, very little. Mm. The doctor used to tell me, Richard, it's only one fistful, yeah? Mm. I looked at him. Hello? Oh. Where to put one fistful? <laughs> 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 you get me, you know, yeah, yeah. my stomach. Yeah. Does it look like a fistful? One so, fistful chicken rice is two, two spoonfuls on yeah. it. <laughs> How to eat one fistful? But eventually, you get used to it. Your body will adapt now, I actually eat one fistful and not every day. Mm. Do you feel full? Wife, huh? Do you feel full uh, though? Uh, yes. You see, the secret also is small meals throughout the day. Mm. You eat but little bit, little bit. small proper meals, like small good not meals. Not snacks. Though. Not snacks, right? No. Mm. I, you eat small, pro that means uh, breakfast, you eat a little bit. Lunch, you eat a little bit. Dinner, you eat a little bit. But also, it depends what you're after. If you're trying to lose weight in a faster time, then you have to structure your meals, what, what you're eating. What you're eating makes a whole lot of difference. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, you ask me what I like to eat. You can look on my FB postings. Huh? I, I mean, we are Malaysians. Come on. I love my naslama. I love my roti chana. I love my chakwe tiao. I love my banana leaf and everything. So today I tell myself, okay, no nasi lemak for the next one month, okay? That's, a, that's good. Today I eat nasi lemak. Okay, the next month only I will touch nasi lemak. But oh, I see, tomorrow, I see. All right, right. Tomorrow I'm eating roti chanai. Okay, roti chanai next month only eat again. Huh? Then the next day, oh, chao kui tiao. There's no end because these yeah. are all sinful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. And that's how we don't realize that mm. we're actually not, you know, yeah. doing it as a favor. Yeah. So you have to structure your food intake like I will just buy simple things like romaine lettuce, tomatoes and all that. I'll just chop them up and then have tuna or, you know, meat. So you have to do not... meal prep now on your own. Uh, nowadays, I'm a bit lazy because uh, I know that I will burn it out. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, okay. When I write, mm. okay, like I said, uh, I don't just ride around Taman, maybe five kilometers and then that's it. You only okay. burn 100 calories. No. When I ride, I'm on the trainer. I follow a program. I signed up for a program on these apps, you know, to train yourself. So that's the thing, you see. As you go on, you get motivated. You, you challenge yourself. You become better. Mm -mm. And now I'm trying to strengthen my legs and ride faster and for longer. 
actually, let's rewind a little bit. How did you get into cycling from, from your brisk walk to your slow jog? And then suddenly you discovered cycling. Okay, after that, uh, one, one day, I went to the market near my place, you know, Sunday market, and I saw a friend of mine who is also just like us, lah, JD. We yeah. will put on weight and all that. I used yeah, to yeah, yeah. his best. Yeah. One day I saw him, wow, how do you lose all that weight? And he was looking good. Mm. Cycling lah, brother. In my heart, I was thinking, hey, don't bullshit lah. Cycling. <laughs> you sick, say you sick lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Right. <clears throat> but I say cycling. He said, don't believe me? Go and start cycling. Go and get a bike. So I said, okay, I will challenge him. So I came back. I used to have a bicycle. Hmm. You know, one of those uh, cheap plug ones you buy from the <laughs> shop, but it does the job. Yeah, yeah. It has a big basket in front for me to, you know, ride down to buy food, tap right, right, food, and right. things like that. So I took a photograph and showed him, you know, can I use this bike? He looked at it and, and what he meant was a proper road bike. He says, brother, I think you need to upgrade. La. So <laughs> right. I didn't listen to him. I couldn't be bothered. A bike is a bike to me. So I took yep. that bike, heavy as it is. I cycled around my taman like an idiot. I put on, you know, um, uh, these Helmet. aftershocks, music, headphones. Right, right. Okay. And listen to music because of boredom. And I cycled for 15 kilometers. Wow. At my pace. So from there, it went on 15 to 20 to 30, all around my place. With an old bike. Same taman, round and round and round and round like a hamster. Okay? <laughs> With an old bike. And then I just put on Strava and look at my results and just want to be faster than my last ride and mm. things like that. So I did that for a while until one day my friend saw my Strava, uh, what do you call uh, things, and he says, Bro, I look at your Strava, the route that you're taking is giving me a headache. <laughs> you're all over the place. Why don't you follow me? Go and buy a proper road bike and follow me. I'll take you to Kasas on the motorbike lane. And mm. I was thinking, oh, you Dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but then after that, I actually bought my road bike about seven months after I started exercising. Mm. And... I went on to the motorbike lane for the very first time following him. And true enough, I fell. Oh, God. What? <laughs> what? I fell. I turned the corner trying to follow him like a hero. And then I don't know how I slipped and fell. And I, you know, bruised myself yeah, yeah. here ah. and all that. Then, you know, these are riders. They're just like golfers. They are very positive. Eh, hey, don't worry lah. That one battle scar lah. Yeah. Wow, battle scar. You know how painful <laughs> it is. A battle scar, it seems. So I just carried on. And until now. So that's how I started cycling and cycling and cycling. And the thing is, you've got to keep the passion alive. And uh, so you just keep cycling, but you reward yourself. You know, you challenge yourself. You know, a lot of us say, oh, we challenge ourselves. Yes, yeah. I do challenge myself to improve. But actually, mm. also, the other part is, you know, at our age, or at least at my age, I'm not young anymore. I'm going to go into six series already. Like, oh my really, God. Richard? My God, I can't believe. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm six series in 2021. <laughs> so the thing is, when you are doing well and you're fit, you know, and you start kicking butts, young fella, okay, who is 20 years younger than you mm. and can't keep up with you. That's me. That kind of feeling makes you want to even improve yourself further. Mm. So that's so the, that motivated the motivation you, that, was, yeah. that you get. Okay. And then once in a while you get, you know, uh, what do you call lazy and all that. I go and buy myself a jersey. And then I, you know, reward yourself with things like that. And that's another thing that motivated me cycling jerseys you guys, you <laughs> yeah, guys seen cycling jerseys yeah, yeah. yes yes they are lycra okay uh there's a term for people like us in our 50s and yeah 60s. what is that yeah yeah mamil m-a-m-i-l uh it stands for men uh, middle age men i think yeah middle age men in lycra yes <laughs> try zipping up a lycra with a belly 
<laughs> yeah. And see how you look. Yeah. You know, there are pro cyclists out there who says, hello, please, like y'all in your 50s and 60s, just wear a t-shirt. Don't try to wear a Lycra. So I had that ambition. I want to fit in. I used to think, I see people's photographs. It's impossible. Like he must have photoshopped it. How can you wear something like that and make you look so good and slim? It's not possible. But eventually, I fitted into one. And right now, it feels good. That's, That's what me. makes you want to go on. That's my motivation because the reason why I keep going to the gym, my wife keeps yelling at me, do it. But I keep seeing this Captain America tight-fitting Lycra shirt. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I want to wear that one of these days. Man. Yeah. So I tried it on. And I'm like, wow, I, I look like <laughs> Captain XXL more like Captain America, man. Seriously. It's, it's like us women, like that little black dress that we want to fit yeah. into. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm. It's a little black dress. So I was a double XL going on to a triple XL t-shirt hmm. uh, before. And now I've gone down to size M. Wow. So that is the difference. Actually I'm, talking so, about that. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. What, what, what's your question? Size M, I freaked out at one point because I remember I came in for a video recording. I wasn't back on radio yet. And I hear someone going, hey, what is, what is this fuller doing here? Like, I looked at it. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> saying all this stuff to me. He looks really familiar. I don't recognize him. He said, uh, hey, JD, it's me. La. I'm looking at it. Hey, Richard, what in the world happened to you? You shrunk, dude. Like you, yeah. One whole person left you and then this is a different <laughs> Richard, you know? And seriously, I never thought it can happen. Not in my entire life. Because when I see other people uh, in, in Lycra jerseys and all that, I tell myself, no way, lah. It's impossible. You can lose weight, but there's no way you can lose so much until you lose that belly. You can. So, you know, to people out there who want to lose weight, never doubt yourself. I doubted myself, but I kept going and going mm. and going. And you will see the results. You can. So uh, how I'm, much weight did you lose? And how long did it take for you to lose the I weight? I lost all together. I think until today, it's about... Uh, 33 kilograms. Whoa. And yes, it'll just take you a year. You know, I know a lot of people because you go through that. I see people and they say, oh, you're very fast, like you lose. I mm, say, mm. don't bluff. La. It will never happen so fast. But yes, it can happen. You can see the weight start to drop. Uh, once you start exercising, once you start having a proper diet, Okay. If you want to lose weight, diet is 80%. Yeah? Exercise is 20%. Um, you must, to me, have both. You cannot have one. A lot of people say, I just diet. Mm. When you diet, yes, you can lose weight. And you can also lose weight very fast. But you can also gain it back very fast because right. your, your engine inside is not running. Yeah. You're not fit. You got to get it running so that your metabolic rate keeps burning and going up. That 20% is to keep your engine running so that your liver, your kidney, your heart, and everything starts running well. Mm. Um, I'm going to do it again this year. Two years ago, I walked into the hospital and did a full thorough test with a cardiogram and everything and with a specialist. Um, I wanted to know, because for all the years I've been eating and the cholesterol and everything, I want to know if I have a blocked artery because when I'm pushing myself in cycling, yeah. I know my condition. I, I, I went in and do that and the specialist said, you're the second person that walked in here that showed me such amazing results to wow. come back like that. So, so if, it is reversible, all these it illnesses. It is reversible. It is reversible, but but seriously, you need to go and have yourself checked before you push yourself. You need to know how your body feels. you got to listen to your body. Don't tomorrow, oh, you have been overweight like me for the last 30, 40 years, and then I'm going to buy a bicycle, I'm going to push myself, especially mountain biking. Mm -hmm. You have to have one of those heart rate sensors because your heart rate will go up. You want to push yourself and your body will tell you 
when to stop. It's because people ignore it, just like badminton players who fall down and, and athletes, cyclists who fall down with a heart attack and all that. Okay, I'm not a doctor, but my logic is when your body tells you, stop, La Richard, you're tired, you are fatigued, you cannot. Don't because of that one last hill climb, I got to push it and finish it. And you don't have a monitor to see how high your heart rate is. If that heart rate goes up and doesn't drop, and you're not used to pushing yourself like that, mm. you will get into trouble. Right. Mm. My heart rate, maximum heart rate allowable right now for my age is 161 or 62. Uh, all you got to do is just take 220 divided by your age. You get your maximum allowable heart rate. Right. When I cycle now, I have, I hit sometimes, my average is about 140, 155, mm. but I've hit 170. Okay, oh. 175. Is that dangerous then for your heart? Not for me. You know why? Because I don't maintain 170 for a long time. Right. It's probably <clears throat> that two minutes when I need to push up a very steep climb. Mm. I maintain it for one minute or 30 seconds and then it, I, it comes back down again. But I can reach that because I'm constantly training. you conditioned. Okay. Yeah. I've conditioned the body. And it's mm. not the first time I've hit that. So I've right. hit it over and over again a couple of times. So mm. your body will stretch and stretch and accommodate. Yeah, that. it's like a rubber band, right? Yeah. So it's when it doesn't go back, then that's a problem, right? If I try to hit 190 like a young man now with that heart rate, then I will get into trouble. Mm. Okay, okay. okay. So but you're going to slowly... Is it hard to maintain this lifestyle now, Richard? Do you have to constantly motivate yourself do you have to constantly it, just tell uh, yourself yes you even yes. though one maybe one morning you're just really tired i'm like ah, i think i'll skip today but you're like you have to sort of <laughs> that's psych, <Bell> and me <laughs> psych yourself up to go out there and do the exercise yes uh there are a lot of times i mean as you keep doing and doing and doing and then there's something called a burnout factor as well hmm. you get burnt out and then after that you take a rest you take a rest and you come back again. At the end of the day, it depends what you want. Um, being a cyclist now, I do it because I want to have fitness. I want to be in good health. And so when I get burnt out with cycling, I take out my sneakers again. Let's go back to, you know, back to the roots and walk and do brisk walks. Uh, I, I do a bit of jogging as well. I alternate. So mm -hmm. it, you know, you, you, you keep the passion of being fit alive. But you do that. You still do the five days a week kind of thing? Or has it reduced? Has it increased? I try to exercise, um, but mostly cycling. Yeah, I try to ride about two to 300 kilometers in a week. Jeez. So uh, basically, I'm putting in about four days a week of cycling. Whether it be indoors or outdoors. You can cycle to Singapore, man. I've cycled the furthest to uh, Malacca and back. Good which is God. 400 over 460 kilometers. Yeah. Wait, uh, if I cycle to Malacca, let's say for Mila, and then I eat chicken rice ball <laughs> and I cycle back, does it burn off everything? Oh, yes. Okay, can. for sure. I, I will do Guaranteed. that. Guaranteed. Okay. Yes, yes. How about your diet now, Richard? Are you still very careful with your diet or do yes. you allow yourself cheat days? Do you uh, have your occasional uh, nasi lemak? Oh, yes, I do. I'm, uh, I, I am more mindful of what I put in my mouth and how much I put in my mouth now. So I actually go for salads and things like that, but they're all the days if you look at my Facebook posting, I'm always posting about food. I still <laughs> yes, love my roja. <laughs> I, you know, I still love the vades. I, I love my naslema, my I love my chakwe tiao and everything. But I know that when I take it, I have to burn it off. So maybe the next day I will go for a ride or whatever. And it does get burned off. Weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, I ride with my friends, okay? Um, they are both different type of riders, okay? Saturday, I ride with... Uh, two other daddies. One of them used to be uh, a long time ago uh, when he was young, a national rider. 
Mm. So he's got that fitness and that that kind of thing already. So when we ride, it's not the lingang lingang really Sunday kind of ride, you know. We are pushing ourselves, pushing, pushing, pushing for an hour or two at least, and then we come back. And I burn about eight to nine hundred calories or a thousand at least. And then on Sunday, I ride with a group from Clang, and these are all young riders, yeah. And they ride long distances, a hundred kilometers and above. And because they're young, they're fast. So if I don't want to get dropped off, I have to keep, keep up with pace. them. Keep pace, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's where I burn. Do they know how old you are? Yes, they know. And some of them, uh, sometimes they say, "Oh, you, I want to grow up to be like you." Ah, <laughs> uh, really? yeah. you're their yeah. role model oh now. <laughs> that is a good feeling. I want to be like Mamil Richard. <laughs> no, now I have a nickname with them. They call me this fella, Old Fox, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you know uh, I like to play it down. When people ask me, uh, "What? You can cycle, lah?" I say, "No lah, exercise only, lah." And then one fella will quip in, "Don't let him con you, okay? <laughs> you will die. You will try and follow him. <laughs> you know things like that." And it feels good for me. I'm yeah. not one of the fastest riders, yeah. but. Uh, for my age, yes, I'm very good. So, mm. the reason also because when I started cycling on the motorbike lane, I used to see there are a lot of uh, what do you call people in their fifties and above who are really strong riders. Mm. Maybe because they've been riding for a long time, many many years. For me, I've just been cycling for about three and a half years. Okay, but for my standard. To be three and a half years, and for my age, I'm happy for mm. you know how much I've improved. Yeah. So when I used to see them cycle, they were like the wind, you know. They just pass you, boom, and then they're off. I'm like, wow, the fella not young now. Look yeah. at him and look at me yeah. now. So that inspires me to want to be like him. So I push myself. Don't over push, yeah. Bit by bit by bit. Mm. It takes time. In about a year, you will find that you've improved. This okay. year, you think you're cycling at 29 kilometers an hour. Next year, you'll be doing 30. Mm. Be happy with that one kilometer uh, advantage. Then you'll go faster and faster. So, but you challenge yourself every time, you know. And then you, you get yeah. You Did have you ever the, yeah yeah go sorry. ahead go ahead sorry. And then you have your role models. Mm. So now I try to be a role model to other. Whether it be young riders or you know, or elder riders and things like that, I have my role model as well. Mm. Um, I've got friends who were ex-national cyclists, and they can really cycle. I am nowhere near them. I can't even smell them if they are if I were to cycle with them. But they inspire me. When I push myself, I tell them, I you know things run in your head. I want to cycle like him. I want to mm. cycle like him. Push a little bit more. Push a little bit more. Yeah. Things like that. That helps you to improve. Actually, when you first started out, uh, Richard, did you have a goal weight in mind, or you just wanted to be healthy? I just wanted to get rid of the diabetes, the high cholesterol, and my high blood pressure. Mm. Because I remember, you know, when I was with Astro, when I was with Mix, remember at that time? Yeah, yeah, did he? yeah, yeah. I went downstairs to the TV side, and there we have a doctor, uh, a nurse who is there for to give us yes, medicine yes. if you yes. got your cough and cold and all Dispense, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that time, there was one time period of time I was exercising. She took my blood pressure and says, "Wow, you got very good play, uh, blood pressure for your age." Okay, only that time. After that, everything went downhill. So I keep thinking back: if I can reach that. Blood pressure at that time, I can do it again.、Mm. So that is the motivating factor、mm. that that keeps you going and coming、okay. back. So it wasn't like a goal weight, like I want to be no ninety kilos or eighty kilos from one hundred and ten. No, I just wanted to see.、Uh, I just needed to lose weight and lose all those、uh, so-called sicknesses that came with it,、mm -hmm. and then see where I go from there. But. There's one thing I told myself, Richard. You cannot be what you were before because your engine now, your system, 
is no longer what it used to be. Mm. You're not, you're, you're, you're five series going to six. You cannot be like a three series, okay? Mm. So I told myself, you need a lifestyle change. I used to see people post, oh, lifestyle change, lifestyle mm. change. I used to think, ah, yeah, all this. <laughs> And Dr. Rajbans always drills in lifestyle, lifestyle change. change. Yeah, it has I, to be lifestyle change. I told myself, what lifestyle change? <laughs> la? You know? So, but it's true. You need that lifestyle change. Basically, because not of anything, but because of your age. Mm. You need to change, you know, what you've been doing because your body can't take it anymore. Yeah. So, I told myself, Yes, I need to put everything back now and focus on how I should eat and exercise for my age now. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. It has to be a lifestyle change. No two ways about it. Because everything you've been doing now hasn't been good for you anyway, right? You because might as well just change there. When I was with Mix, you know, I was in my late 30s and 40s. Mm. And by the time I'm done with Mix, I was in my 50s, okay? Uh, uh, no, going heading towards my 50s. 50, yeah. yeah? I cannot be eating like what I was mm. in your 30s. Yeah. Your body changes. Your engine starts to slow down. But mm. I was still eating what I used to eat. Trust me, I still can eat what I used to eat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the same amount as well. They say, oh, uh, as you get older, your appetite it drops and all that. Blah, blah. I can still <laughs> work. <laughs> you try and take me to banana leaf curry and see. <laughs> <laughs> but are you ever worried that you might revert back to that lifestyle yes, again? Yes. Many a times. Yeah. Uh, it, it reminds you. Yeah. You can go back to what you were. So if you Very want, easily. Very, very easily. easily. So if you yeah. don't want to go back to what you were, you have to do whatever it takes to just keep going. Okay. You know? Yeah. What does your family think of your whole new look and your new lifestyle? Oh, they're happy with it. I yeah. mean, I, except my daughter. She misses the pillow on my... On my <laughs> really? Arm. Yeah. Uh, but are you, trying to to, a pillow. are you trying to get them into this, this healthy lifestyle as well? They are already into it, except for my kid. I mean, kids will be kids. Yeah. Uh, my wife, she runs and... She does her own workout upstairs. So I don't know whether I help to inspire it in any way, but she's doing it very regularly. Oh, before this, she wasn't regularly. into it as well. I mean, at, when well, you were at your heaviest. Uh, the thing is, me and my wife, we were athletic when we were young. Mm. Athletic in a sense that we liked sports. Mm. I played soccer or football mm. when I was a kid and I played badminton and all that. Uh, the thing is, uh, during our time, you know, JD, we are very outdoor. Mm. Yeah. We climb up trees, churi rambutan and all that. Because of old fishing. school, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we are very outdoor. We, you know, things like that. And the same, my wife, she used to play hand, uh, handball and whatever and run and things like that. So now she does the same thing. She just runs and she can run. I cannot catch up. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So I'll tell her you run first. So you guys motivate each other, I suppose, now? Uh, not really, because she does her thing. She doesn't cycle. I do my thing. But somehow, you know, it's become a habit. And mm. we are trying to get that little girl at home to do the same now. Yeah. How but old is she now? She's 13. Okay. Right. But <laughs> the kids nowadays aren't so lucky as we were. Mm. We can just open the gate, go out. Mm. Yeah. And never come back until evening. Yeah. And the only most worrisome thing and fearful thing that we ever have is our parents standing in front of the road. You know, <laughs> the biggest... Where uh, have you been? Right, yeah. The most fearsome roadblock <laughs> with a cane behind a hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, but Richard, uh, um, what other benefits yeah, come from your healthier lifestyle now? Benefits that come from... Other kinds of benefits. Oh, are you feeling? Are you feeling? Are you feeling healthier other ways as well? I, I know where you're going. Yes, <laughs> yes. Your your whole system, your body, is in optimum 
performance, you know? Yeah. You are, f- everything is running. Even your, uh, your, your testosterone. And all right. That okay. Will go up. Mm. And you need your testosterone to go up. As you get older, your testosterone level will drop. Mm. So um, I've stopped doing that. But I used to buy supplement to take so that testosterone gives you energy to perform. Yep. So yeah. you want to be at your peak. I mean, in terms of if you're pushing yourself or training yourself. Okay. But for normal exercise, as long, like I said, you get your uh, BPM up to 120 and above, you're fine mm. to burn okay. fat. But yes, you're right, <laughs> JD. It does help. <laughs> really. Because the thing is usually at up, uh- once you get to a certain age, maybe in your fifties or mid fifties, right, it starts to dip. Yeah. But oh, but you, you look when, like you're in your forties right now, man. You look amazing. Yeah. When you're exercising and when you're eating proper, everything goes up. Your <laughs> stamina <laughs> goes up. You got very good stamina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, JD. That's your motivating exactly. factor. Exactly. I'm yeah. like, I think. I'm, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> now, but, um, I think, uh, yeah, lastly, Richard, last, one last question uh, before we wrap it up. What's your advice to those okay. who want to be healthier, fitter, and leaner, and better in yeah, like health and life, but they're having issues not knowing where to start and, you know, they'll think that it's very expensive because I have to go get a personal trainer and things like that, but you no, didn't. Mm-hmm. No. You don't have, What's to your have advice? a personal trainer. My advice is don't wait too long. I mean, Malaysia, obesity, we are champions. Mm. Okay? Kita sudah naik podium. We are the fattest country in Southeast Asia. So don't wait too long. I always tell my friend, not everyone has a second chance like me. Okay? Don't wait till you are 48 or 50. Oh, Richard can do it. I can do it. No, your body is different from my body. Mm. I'm lucky and blessed that, you know, genetically, there's nothing wrong with me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Where I'm going. Yeah. So I'm given the second chance because maybe my, my, my foundation health-wise is okay. Mm. It's just that you go and, you know, screw it up yourself with your lifestyle. And now I can come back to it again, but not everybody is like that. So take what, you know, baby steps. Sarah taught me this, baby steps. One step at a time, one day at a time, but challenge yourself and motivate, constantly motivate yourself. Get a role model, you know. I've got people who keep seeing me on Facebook, posting up my exercise routine and all that until they get into it as well. Mm. It makes me happy that I'm able to inspire others as well, but just keep doing it, okay? And most importantly, listen to your body. Your body will tell you when not to push, overdo it. Listen to your body and you know you should be fine. Diet. 80%, exercise 20%. Mm. You got to have both. A lot of people say, I go on keto diet and all yeah. that. Yes, you can go and all that. But the problem is, if your organs don't start to work, also no point, I feel. Mm. So, you Is know, it as I'm, easy as just going out for a brisk walk every day? You can do that. But make sure your brisk walk is brisk walk, huh? not <laughs> lenggang lenggang. Huh? <laughs> When I say raising your blood, uh, your sorry, your your BPM, heart rate up to one hundred and twenty, it is brisk walking. Mm-hmm. That means you just have to think. I'm late for the bus. I'm trying to catch the bus. <laughs> you will be fine. If you're right. late for work and you're walking at that pace, good. Yeah. You cannot say, oh, today I walk already. Lenggang, lenggang. I exercise more. <laughs> So now I can whack. No, yeah. mm-hmm. you have to make sure that this is one thing I remember uh, uh, what do you call a pharmacist told me. Output must be more than input. Right. Mm. 
you want to lose weight, output more than input. If you can just remember that, Gao Tim, no problem. And the best time to start is right now, wow. today, right? Yeah, don't don't wait until you're 50. And then you see, oh, Richard can do it. I can wait until 50. No, Richard is different from me. Both of us are different. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people get a second chance. Some people don't. And then the thing is, when they decide they want to do it, let's say at my age, four years ago, I was still, I was in my mid fifties. Okay. If I don't, uh, you know, be careful and listen to my body and things like that, not overdo it myself. You never know. You take a bike out. Whoa, I want to push already. I want, I'm very motivated. And then you go up a hill, but you've never put your heart to that strain before mm -hmm. you will get into trouble. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of badminton players, a lot of cyclists end up, you know, killing over the, while yeah. in, the, in the middle of yeah. a game or don't, a, a don't play the fool with heart mm. rate. You go up, you have to come down fast. Mm. You know, when you train yourself, push it slowly by bit by bit, it will train. So mm. once it hit a high heart rate, within a minute, once you stop, it should fall down already. If yeah. it doesn't fall down, you're asking for trouble. Okay. So that's right. the thing. And have well, a role model that will motivate you. Well, thank you so much, Richard, for being a lot of people's role model right now. I hope and, so. Yeah. <laughs> and I will start. I need we need to start, man, Bell. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Bro, you are nothing. <laughs> Looking at you now, you are nothing compared to what I was before. Yeah. I, oh, I think But the yeah, thing I, is with us, I think the the I guess the less heavy you are, the less the, the more difficult it is to lose that weight. Yes. Not motivated and, enough, and you don't get motivated you because yeah. like for me, I, I have that last five kilos that I want to lose, but it's not going down for the past couple of years. It's hey, not it, going down. It's it's happening to me as well. I'm yeah. stuck at 73, 74. Uh -huh. I want to bring it down to 70. Uh, this is because of cycling. Yeah. Technically, I don't have to, but the lighter you are, the easier for you to push uphill, faster right. you go. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, it's a challenge. But it comes to a point where you just plateau out. Mm. But then it's not impossible. You so you have to do, do something. You have to challenge yourself in other ways it's, as well. You just yeah. have to see where you're going wrong that mm. those few kilos can't go down. Yeah, You can. Mm. Hey, Richard, uh, I think uh, your next step, right? It should be to organize a uh, Latour the old fox. And then uh, you need to get all the older guys, all the mammals to go on this cycling tour. And then that, that should be your next thing, man. The moment COVID clears, you know. I think that there, there are lots of, lots of mammals out there. Yeah. Seriously. So do a tour, man. Do, a, do like a competition uh -huh. and then get them involved in this and then go around the country or something. When, when you go out to, you know, uh, and cycle, you will see the good cyclists are all in their forties and above. Yeah. Never forties. Very few forties and below. Forties and below, you can't blame them. They have got career in their head. They have got to work and everything. Mm. They don't have. They have the money, but they don't have the time yeah. to spend to take care of their bodies. So mm. again, I don't blame them. But then but, again, yeah. don't wait too late. And don't use that as an excuse as well. Like, oh, yeah. I'm so tired. I'm a working parent and it, I yes. don't have time. Don't use that as an excuse. Your body will also adapt once you start something. Mm. Yeah.